In this video, we're going to talk about one tip for every single weapon. So if you want to have more consistent value in your rounds, make sure you watch to the end and please do me a huge solid and smash that like and subscribe. But let's get right into it, starting off with the Ghost Pistol. The main tip I would give you is utilize the movement forgiveness with the Ghost. It's much more forgiving than the other weapons that you could use in an eco round. On top of that, you have a much larger magazine, so you have the ability to take a couple of shots, move to the left or right counter strafe and take more shots and that mobility makes you elusive and allows you to put out a lot of damage now also make sure that you're really careful specifically on some of the longer range maps players are buying the sheriff a lot more and of course up against chamber you're gonna have to deal with that potential one shot capability from range you can't just out distance all of your engagements anymore now that these one tap weapons are seeing substantial play in that eco round so definitely keep that in mind especially for maps like breeze now speaking of breeze it's a breeze to climb to diamond immortal or even radiant with our brand new get good sale because right now we have a huge discount for the game leap website so if you want to access all of our in-depth aim courses weapon guides and so much more you can dominate with any character and all you have to do is go check out our brand new deal don't miss out on it right now down below now the next weapon that we got to talk about is the classic pistol and remember from those close ranges where you're going to be using the right click on a classic pistol it's going to do 26 damage to the body with one shot and that's going to be pretty consistent to even hit one while you're jumping or moving so in situations where you know the enemy has 26 or less health honestly the classic pistol from close range is better than even something like the phantom or the vandal because you can move run jump peek and you have a lot more potential with getting that last bit of damage on the enemy very easily. Now, when you're closer to that 50 damage, if you right-click center mass, you're still going to be able to get two pellets in their body and typically kill them, but it's a little bit more risky and not as guaranteed, so keep that in mind. Now, the Frenzy is going to be a weapon that you're going to want to actually hug natural cover and get really close in on an enemy and even run and gun to an extent in order to get the highest impact on it in the easiest way possible. Now, if you don't have a form of mobility, which is probably the best way to get in, you need to pick the places that you're routing on a tech very specifically if you want to use this gun but oftentimes realize that this is a gun that is going to be even better when you're actually baiting an ally to guarantee get that trade because unless the enemy is in perfect effective range the frenzy isn't the best weapon to actually start an engagement off with but let's say you're arena for instance and you utilize that frenzy to get a guaranteed kill all of a sudden you're 150 you can run it down and get kill after kill because you're very difficult to kill and you're not going to be able to get killed fast enough when you're rushing it down on enemies controlling sight and you have full sight control. But if you peek along sight line and get one tapped by the goddamn ghost, you're never going to get any value out of the frenzy. Now, the next weapon that we're going to talk about is actually the sheriff. And the sheriff is seeing more and more pick, like I mentioned before, on some of the longer distance maps capable of challenging ghost pistols from safety. And unless you're up against another sheriff or a goddamn chamber, you don't have to worry about getting one shot. So you can utilize those very, very long peaks to potentially get some value. Now, I will say you typically only want to utilize the sheriff if your character has a very powerful bit of utility that is going to be free. For instance, if you're playing Breeze, playing a jet with the sheriff is actually not bad if you're playing attack because when you peek that a site you actually do get your dash for potential re-peak and if you have a viper if you have a way to get onto site you don't need your targeted smokes then having an updraft or anything like that is not really worth the less firepower that you can get out of a sheriff so it's really about understanding the value associated with the sheriff and then directly comparing that to the value you could get on the map on the point you plan to push with the utility you could buy instead if you would just to get a ghost or a classic think about that and then you can decide whether or not you want to buy the sheriff now the last weapon that we got to talk about in the pistol category is the shorty now the shorty is definitely the most niche weapon by far it's a weapon that you really want to catch an enemy lacking holding a very tight corner however it can also be a weapon that you can utilize as a secondary to a weapon that might incentivize enemies to push you kind of aggressively so a good example of that would be like a marshall shorty combo so imagine a situation where you take a shot with a marshall and the enemy jet dashes at you thinking that you're going to be caught in the reload animation and you're going to be vulnerable but in that time frame 
you whip out the shorty, you bait them in, and you get a free kill on that jet player and a gun upgrade. That's just one example of where you can use the firepower of the shorty to punish enemies that get over eager, and it's a good complement to some of the weapons that have a specific weakness in close range. However, because the classic pistol is so strong, I think the situations in which you buy a shorty is actually pretty rare. Next up, we gotta talk about the Spectre, the weapon that you're typically gonna buy after that initial round if you won pistol round. And make sure you're always buying the Spectre with full armor because one of the best things about this weapon is its consistency and its forgiving nature. You are not necessarily one tapping everyone you see, but you're outputting a very consistent amount of damage regardless of how much you're running or moving. It's very forgiving as far as movement is concerned. And if you have a large enough health total, you're going to be able to easily 1v2, 3, or even 4 pistol users or classic users that are coming at you. But if you just like try to buy up to a Spectre and you don't even buy armor, it's too easy for you not to get the value out of the Spectre as a whole because it's better in a more elongated fight because it has more consistency and less burst. So just keep that in mind when you're using and buying the Spectre. Now the next weapon that we got to talk about is the Stinger. And I really do think that the Stinger is kind of like a bigger frenzy. So a lot of the same things are going to apply. Specifically the fact that you have to be hugging natural cover and routing around natural cover to get value. Typically, characters with mobility are going to be better on the Stinger. And realistically, if you plan to use it, you really need to actually plan the routes in which you engage. Try to find the areas that have the most amount of cover. Utilize the engage abilities and everything you can to try to bridge the gap between you and the enemy. Because realistically, you have to be very, very close to the enemies if you want to make this that effective. Now, next up, we got to talk about the Bucky. Bucky is an interesting weapon where it used to be completely busted back in the old right-click days, but these days, the Bucky is in a very weird spot because there's typically better alternatives. Things like the Sheriff or weapons like the Sheriff are going to get you more consistent value if you have the skill to back them up. And other weaponry like the Marshal is going to be more consistent from further ranges. I do think that if you're going to utilize the Bucky, you still want to try to get damage on enemies by jiggle peeking an angle and right clicking when you first make contact with them. So it's a little bit easier for you to potentially finish them off later on. And really with the Bucky, you typically want to slightly pivot an angle, take a shot back up. So if enemies want to push you around the angle, you get another shot. That's the idea here that you're creating situations where if an enemy wants to swing around that corner, they get directly punished. And that's really the main way that you're going to get value out of this weapon if you use it at all. Now, we do got to talk about the big brother to the little brother that is the Bucky, and that's the Judge. Now, the Judge is absolutely insane against enemies that don't properly clear you, don't properly punish you for utilizing this weapon. I think this weapon can be incredibly amazing if you have a little bit more money than the rest of your team and you want to gamble on enemies trying to punish you and your allies by rushing an objective and they don't properly clear a corner or a choke where you're holding a slight angle outside of the opening of a choke. Judge can be a way where if enemies aren't disciplined with their utility use, they don't properly clear you or they assume that they could just rush in and be aggressive and they take that initiative. The judge can punish one, two, three, four players, the entire goddamn team. Honestly, it's a very powerful weapon. Don't be afraid to actually push in and around smokes because you're going to have the advantage if enemies want to push into those smokes. But keep in mind that if you've done that at all before in the round, Enemies are going to often spray check those smokes, and it's not going to be a worthwhile strategy later on. Now, the next weapon we got to talk about is the Bulldog. Bulldog is, in my opinion, an incredibly underrated weapon. It's very rewarding for using this weapon with proper crosser placement and proper counter strafing discipline. You're also not going to want to spray more than maybe four bullets maximum with this weapon. The ADS is okay, but realistically, the hip fire is where you're going to want to be using this weapon. And just realize that the Bulldog is going to be about the same amount of punishment as the freaking Vandal. You have to be very precise, very consistent. You want that little tight grouping. And if you want to have the best success with this gun, you want to use it in a very similar way where you're taking small controlled bursts, taking steps left and right, resetting your aim with counter strafing and being a little bit more elusive and trying to reset your aim. Don't be spraying this gun around like crazy. And if I would actually relate like the Spectre as the little Phantom, the Bulldog would be something similar to like a little Vandal in the way in which you need to spray and crouch and control your recoil. It's very similar in that regard. 
Next up, we got to talk about the Marshall, and the Marshall is going to be far and away better on Chamber and Jet than everyone else, but you can still get value with the weapon on the really long distance maps. You want to set up situations where you can get shots on an enemy, either miss or get a body shot, and you won't get traded out instantly, so you want to really utilize the long distance aspect of this gun. Now, that being said, please keep in mind that if you crouch, you are going to be really consistent hit firing wise, so let's say you take a body shot on an enemy, you tag them, and then they want to rush you down. You can still barrel stuff hip fire this weapon and get consistent damage out with it. So all in all, it's actually a pretty versatile weapon that I think actually is incredibly powerful in the right hands. Speaking of powerful, we got to talk about the operator. The operator is freaking amazing. Of course, it can be completely dominant depending on the rank you're in, especially if you do not know how to properly play around the operator. But the actual tip that I want to give here is specifically the comparison between hold to zoom and toggle. And Specifically, if you want to maximize your aim or you're having some trouble hitting shots, I would highly suggest toggle rather than hold. And here's the simple reason. When you're trying to aim, and that is really all holding an angle is about with an operator, trying to aim and react, you want to have the least amount of tension on your mouse as possible. This is actually a habit I teach in general with trying to improve your aim where the less buttons and the less things that you put on your mouse rather than just the raw input and moving the mouse itself and aim, the better your aim is going to be because any pressure you put on there is going to slightly change your aim. So, for example, imagine you're taking a flick without putting any pressure on your mouse. And then you're taking that same flick, but at the same time, you're putting some pressure maybe on that freaking right mouse button. And you're also pressing a button on your mouse that controls your microphone. And that extra bit of pressure is not allowing you to be as consistent as you normally are because it's extra small little bits of force and realistically this is not going to change your aim all that much but overall your aim is going to be very very slightly better if you utilize the toggle rather than the hold now the next weapon that we got to talk about is actually the Ares, and the Ares was really broken for a while, but now it's back down to reality, and it's still very strong, but it's not like the end-all be-all. Now the only tip that I'd give you when utilizing the Ares is asking yourself why you specifically want the Ares. How do you plan on utilizing its strengths over some of the alternatives, like the Spectre or the Bulldog? Because specifically, that Ares is going to be a weapon that in the head-to-head -head versus a Spectre, it's probably going to be a lot less consistent, and the time to kill is going to be slower, and you would get more value on average just using the Spectre outside of one metric, which is that wall bang ability. So if you are not playing in an area that allows you to get value out of the wall bang, or you're not thinking about what walls you're going to wall bang to get value, then you might want to second guess your choice of using this weapon in the first place. All I ask is you have a plan before you buy the weapon. Next up, we got to talk about the Guardian, and I do think that the Guardian is actually underpicked, and we've seen a slight pick rate increase, especially on these longer distance maps. Specifically, the Guardian has the best first shot accuracy in the entire game as far as rifles are concerned, especially when you're aiming down the sights. Now, I do think that this weapon has a little bit of a weakness from close up and it has a weakness up against multiple enemies. So characters that have a get out of jail free card, characters like Chamber, characters like Jet and Reyna if she gets the kill, are going to be a little bit better on the Guardian than other characters. But all in all, as long as you maintain proper spacing and try to fight at these long angles as much as possible, you will be at a natural advantage with the Guardian up against many other types of weapons and even the other rifles. Now, speaking of the other rifles, we do got to talk about the Vandal and the Phantom. First off, let's talk about the Vandal. In the head-to-head, -head, the Vandal is going to win on long-distance dueling compared to the Phantom. And this is the type of duels that you would rather take. And specifically, the close-range spray battles are things that you would rather avoid. I'm not saying that you can't challenge up close and personal, but realize spraying is going to be less consistent and taking a small burst of shots and counter strafing or moving and then taking another burst of shots is going to be a lot easier for the enemy to punish you because you're closer to them. It's going to be easier for them to transfer damage onto you. So that tap or spray or burst fire into movement is not going to be as effective. But moving on to the Phantom, one thing that I think is the biggest downside to people using the Phantom that I see when I VOD review players is the discipline goes out the window. Players will have the crosshair discipline, the one tap ability, and they'll get those one taps, those headshots, and they'll put their crosshair placement really really perfectly and they'll counter strafe after a couple of shots and the vando almost forces you to have that discipline 
but when they swap over to the Phantom, it just goes out the freaking window. And just because you're utilizing a weapon that has better spray capabilities, has a larger mag so you can spray more and spray more forgivingly because it's easier to control, doesn't mean that that should be your absolute crutch. Doesn't mean that you can't one tap with the Phantom from a number of different ranges and doesn't mean that your discipline should go completely out the window. So definitely keep that in mind. And if you use either of these guns, understand their strengths and weaknesses and play towards them rather than worrying too much about what gun is better or worse. Speaking of worse, if you feel like you've been getting only worse in Valorant, our new Game Leap discount sale is here to help with code GETGOOD that's gonna allow you to access all the advanced guides, VOD reviews, and pro breakdowns at a fraction of the cost. There's no better time to climb the ranked ladder than right now, so do yourself a favor and go check it out right now before you miss out down below.